Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux in VirtualBox. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is to download VirtualBox. I will put a link into the description where you can download the installer. You can also use VMware and I'll put a link into the description to the video on where you can get it for free. The next thing you will need is to go to Kali.org and download the ISO for the operating system. So go up into the downloads and click to download. Now select your version, you can get the normal version or the light version or the mate version or any version you want and I will choose the simple version into 32-bit and save the ISO. While this is downloading, let's create the virtual machine into VirtualBox for Kali Linux. So here, what you want to do is click on New, then put in a name for your virtual machine, and make sure you select the type Linux and that you select the normal Linux and that you also select the correct architecture. In my case, it's gonna be 32-bit. Then, once everything's set up, you can click Next and input the amount of RAM you want. I'm going to put four gigabytes of RAM and click Next. Then create a virtual hard drive, VDI, now, I'm going to go for fixed size, you can also go for dynamic, but I do recommend you to go for fixed size. And I do strongly recommend to put around 30 gigs because Kali Linux uses it. Uh, you can also live with, I think, 25, but you'll have to try and then click create. You have to try it and if it gives you uh, errors during installation, like installation failed, then what you need to do is actually increase the size. I'm gonna go for 30 gigabytes. Next, let's go to settings. And here everything looks fine. Under system, I'm gonna disable the floppy. And these look fine. Then I'm going to give it one more core and enable that and everything looks fine. Now enable 3D acceleration and max out the VRAM. Under storage, I'm going to also put the ISO. And then everything else looks right. So start the machine. And at this point, you will be prompted with this screen. Here you want to select install. Now you can also go for graphical install, but we're gonna use just the normal installation procedure. Use your arrow keys and enter to select through the menus. Here, select your language and your region. and also okay so this looks right and now you'll have to wait a bit Okay, this, uh, you can let it like this and then hit enter. Now you want to put in your root password. So this is the password that you use when you install programs and do all kind of stuff. So you must remember this 
<coughs> and you want to input it and remember it. This is the equivalent to the administrative password in Windows. Now, let's select manual for the partitioning. Okay, and hit yes to create a new partition table. Now, click on the free space and create a new partition. And I'm going to let around six gigabytes free on the drive. And then put it as a primary partition and everything here looks all right. So let's just uh, hit on done. And click again on the free space and create one more partition and leave two gigs free for everything else that Linux might need to do. Put it as a logical partition and select it as swap space. Now what swap space is, is basically where the operating system will put the files that don't fit anymore into the RAM. So let's create the partition and start installing. Okay, this looks right, so let's click yes, and this will take quite a long time. Now I'm going to skip through this and cut the video here, and be right back when it's close to be done. Okay, so here you want to select yes. Now, just uh, click continue and leave that blank. Now, what this will be is, um, is just so that it could use other resources. Okay, now click yes to install the grub and select your drive. Now, what this is for is basically uh, their bootloader, and it's used to select the operating system. It's especially useful when you have mo uh, multiple operating systems on your computer. And uh, we're gonna still install it just so that we have the advanced boot options. And for now, this is going to be taking a bit more time, so um, you have to wait a bit more, and I'm gonna be right back when it's done. Okay, okay, so click on continue. But before you do that, make sure that you remove the ISO. Now, in my case, it will it was automatically removed by VirtualBox, and now the system will reboot. So this is the grub. If you don't do anything in five seconds, it's gonna automatically boot into Kali. If you do though, press the arrow keys, you can select advanced options. Next, to select the operating system, just go ahead and highlight it and click Enter to boot into Kali Linux. Okay, so the default username is root and the password, you're gonna have to type in the password that we actually put in when we installed Kali Linux, that one root password. Okay, so now we are booted into Kali Linux, and now you might want to select your resolution because we still have to install the guest editions in order for everything to work all right in VirtualBox. But this is not the normal procedure where we actually put in the disk. We mount the disk. We actually do have to run some terminal commands and I'm going to guide you through this so that it's going to be as easy as possible.
So now, theoretically, Kali Linux is working and you can use it, but still we're going to get and install the guest editions because it is recommended to do so. Now, if you're in VMware, you have to run their wizard to do that, but for VirtualBox, you're going to have to use this procedure that I'm going to show you right now. And for this, we're going to have to open up the terminal. Now, if you don't know how it looks, just go into the app drawer and search for terminal, but this is the icon right here. The command that we first have to run is sudo apt-get update. So this will update uh, all the repositories and everything uh, in Linux. Now, I'm not sure if Kali requires the sudo syntax because that is for the super user. Now, since we are already the root user, I don't think it's necessary but I only used Kali once and in Ubuntu is always required. The next command that you need to run is sudo apt-get, of course, again, the apt-get, install, and then it's dash y, virtualbox, in one word without the dash, then it's dash guest, additions uh, dash x11 so now it's going to just uh, start installing the guest additions and it's not going to take a long time it's going to be doing soon done very soon and once it's done we have one more command to run and after that everything is set up Okay, so once this is done, the command is reboot to actually just restart the system. And with this, we basically finished. Now in the grub, I'm not gonna press anything. And as you can see, it's just gonna automatically boot into Kali if I don't press any keys on my keyboard. Okay, so I'm gonna log in with the root and the password. And here we go, this is Kali Linux installed. So yeah guys, if you enjoyed the video, please drop a like. If you want to see more videos like this one, click that subscribe button and the little bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. So see you next time on How Do IT.